I understand that uh, that the Hubble takes pictures in black and white. How do you create these amazing color images? Yeah, so an image you see like this one is made up of many images, probably tens of images taken uh, in different filters with different exposure times, layer them on top of each other to make a nice uh, color composite image. When you see a typical Hubble image, really, it's probably dozens of images that, that went into making that color image. This is a good visualization of how we make these images. So this is uh, three black and white images of an object. You can see that this one's bright, so there's probably a lot of red in it. The blue one is a bit dark, so you can maybe start to guess what the color is going to be. The next step would be to add the colors, and then you stack them on top of each other and make this lovely image of Mars. And you can see that the blue areas on the atmosphere are highlighted in the blue image. The white spot is one of the polar caps, and if you notice on your black and white image, that's pretty bright in each one of these images. So red, green, and blue all together makes white. In July, Mars will be in opposition. Explain what opposition means. We want to observe these planets when we can see the most detail possible, and that's when they're closest to us. So if a planet is at this point in its orbit, that distance is small, but if it's way over here, then that's a larger distance, so the planet will be farther away. We get the best detail when we observe it opposition. You know what I like most about this? Opposition normally sounds like a negative thing if you're in opposition, <laughs> but here it's an incredibly cool thing and a great opportunity for the Hubble. For the remaining lifetime of Hubble, we'll take images of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune once per year. All of those images, the data will be stored right here in this facility, and that will be a treasure trove of information for scientists from here on out. For years to come, hopefully these data will have the longevity that the Voyager data do. We're still using those today. Amy, you're the principal investigator of OPAL. What is OPAL? OPAL is a Hubble observing program where we observe each of the outer planets once every single year so that we can monitor them long term. Every single year we'll get a new view and it turns out these planets look very different every single year. Yeah. Now there's only one Saturn as far as I know, right? There's only one Saturn. And here we got five of them. So this is a montage, basically coming from uh, Equinox, mm -hmm. where the rings are edge on, all the way up to the southern summer solstice. So we're essentially going from fall to summer. What we do when we're studying the planets is because their years are so long, we want to go back and look at all the data sets we have. And we actually go back and we look at Voyager data of Saturn from 1981 or Jupiter from 1979. You don't mean the Voyager. My Voyager was in the 24th you mean century. The, the, really old the real Voyager. Voyager. Okay, because I, yeah. I, I still get confused, if you can believe that. Data that's 40 years old? That's right. So the OPAL program is picking up where Cassini and Voyager left off, and we'll get these yearly views that we'll get for the next 5, 10 years, but we hope they'll still be used 40 years from now as well.